morning. Good afternoon. Hello. There's Randy. Um, welcome. Randy already <laughs> disappeared. Um, already did. Yeah. Well, there's Randy. Hi, Randy. Welcome back, Vicky. And we have a special co-host today. We have Ashley here with us. And um, yeah, it's not me that disappeared this time. So I'm. I didn't. Nothing <laughs> happened on my screen. I know that's what happens to me. That's what it seems. Like. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm validated. Ashley, I used to always black out or like circle out. So running joke is that it's my hair that causes technical difficulties. But <laughs> just tell people you black out. That's way fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just blacks out periodically. So today's, today's topic is going to be a fun, interesting one. I think everyone, um, no matter who you are has some kind of opinion or I, thoughts on it, but it's what do women really want out of relationships with men um, or someone in their, an opposite sex from you in love and friendship in just um, sex. whatever kind of really intimacy, non-intimacy, sex. Yes. <laughs> so um I was reading an article and I, th I sent it to a few of you guys about psychology today had an article where they talked mm -hmm. about looking at it. women want out of um, yeah. friend friendship or, and a lot of it is about um, integrity and intimacy and just respect and consideration. And it's the same for friendship, for um, relationship, for business, for any kind of relationship you have with a male um, you just want respect and some sort of level of intimacy and kindness and understanding and integrity. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, yeah, but if I'm just having a hookup and that's all I want from you, I don't care. <laughs> like, be mean to me, whatever. I don't care. You have some different criteria for just a day. Right. What did you say? <laughs> I'm like, dang, Rach, now we know what she's into. Well, <laughs> you just got right into it. I'm just like, <laughs> I know, right? No loop, just right into it. Uh oh. Oh, now she froze. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And then Randy disappeared. Ashley, thank God you're here because it would just be me alone I by myself know. with those thoughts. <laughs> so, okay, well, I. If it's just like a hookup relationship, what do you guys want? I've never had one of those. <laughs> well, if you were to have one, would you have criteria for it? Or as long as the person that I have just a hookup with is understands what I want out of it and they mm -hmm. what they want, that's all I need. Just that mutual respect. But I've had one without the mutual respect and I didn't care going in. I just wanted the hookup. And then afterwards it was so bad that I was like, okay, note to young self, don't do that anymore because it was awful. So, cause he didn't care anything about me and not that you have to have a relationship, but like there needs to be a little bit of like, you know, um, at least like interested in whether I enjoy myself right. or not exactly or respect mm -hmm. or whatever and there was yeah it was just so I guess yeah. just don't so, be selfish don't be selfish, don't be selfish. <laughs> don't be selfish. yeah, yeah. That's a, I that, guess that, that'd be a good cry all, all relationships with men don't be selfish in general My, yeah. I have this unfortunate um quirk where I actually have to feel a connection with the person before I am sexually turned on by them um unless I'm on testosterone hormone replacement therapy <laughs> then i'm a different person but then you're thinking like a guy with your day in lieu That's, of you that, know. yes it literally yeah. is just like to fill a need and then move on and that's without that that's really not who i am um so yeah it's kind of unfortunate because unless you're in a relationship you know what how are you supposed to keep yourself sexually satisfied if you want a connection with somebody but then you're not in a relationship and so you're you wh what are your choices you have hookups but you're not really connected to them so i kind of yeah you know it's kind of unfortunate when i was younger i thought yeah i can't have you know that a great sexual experience if i don't have that connection and yes in a relationship i have to have that 
connection. But I found out that um, there is a type of connection <laughs> with hookups too. <laughs> that is, you know, it's a different kind of like exciting connection. And um, but like I said, it goes down to like a mutual respect for each other, knowing that okay, no one's leading anyone on, or this is known. This is what we're doing, and it's. But there yeah, is I don't want a connection for a hookup because I I'm never going to see them again. So if I have a connection, I'm in trouble. Now I've got but, feelings okay. and I, there you know, is, I've just been abandoned. Is, so, oh, but there is a type of connection that you can feel there is. Right. But I don't want to, I don't want a Randy connection because yeah. they're gone. <laughs> and I always I'm, just feel empty. I always just feel empty afterwards. Like even if the act itself is fun the next day, like I, I just, I feel it's not it's, guilt. It's just, a, it's just empty. I don't know. It's just a it's vibrator with a heartbeat. That's either. all it is. Yeah, that's how you that think of it. Doesn't work for you. So how about in um, yeah. how about a friends with benefits? Would, would you have a friends with benefits? Because there's that friendship. There's no, because I get no. jealous. I don't like to share. Messy. No. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, then in a relationship, let's talk about relationships. Uh, separate from marriage, just somebody that you're dating. What is, what is the factors that change from, okay, this is someone that I just want to have fun with to, oh, this is someone I actually want to have in a relationship with. Like, what is it that they have or they make you feel that makes you think, okay, this is where it crosses the um, line for me now. This is where I want to go into relationship territory. Thought? We should let <laughs> Ashley talk. <laughs> well, I don't have any hot takes because uh, I don't usually go into relationships where I'm not dating. <laughs> like I don't do casual hookups. So but where do you get into uh, dating? Like when you meet someone, how do you decide this person is someone I actually want to date? I don't intentionally go into anything knowing that I'm going to date them or that I'm looking for a dating relationship. It's just organic. Um, I, st I'm kind of on, on, on Rangie's playing field where I have to feel like an emotional connection first. And that usually is like an organic, you know, development through just having a friendship with someone. And then I start to develop feelings and then I realize that I want to date them. And I feel like all of the emotional connections, um, happen first and then, and that's whenever you kind of grow that sexual desire. Um, mm -hmm. And so that happens last. But I'm hearing a lot of you guys talk about how that's something you look for first. And then you and then you jump into that where yeah. I usually so know. Relationships, no. I actually go about relationships differently. I have to have an emotional attack. I also don't think yeah. that I require a man for... Um, for sexual satisfaction so fair, fair. I, I think yep. that you know you, you single for on. so long i 100 percent agree <laughs> so i don't go looking for it because i know that i can satisfy myself and so i'm going to focus on the thing i'm not going to put the emotional energy into playing games with people and you know putting my my emotions and my feelings out there for someone to manipulate um mm -hmm. i'd rather just satisfy myself sexually until the appropriate emotional connection comes along. See, that's oh, for sure. I think what a lot of women are now, especially now, doing feeling and thinking, because we can take care of ourselves financially, sexually, um, mentally, emotionally. So, what we're looking for in men for relationships is actual partnership, Different. friendship, mm -hmm. um, understanding, like. My, my display. I just want you to understand me <laughs> where I'm coming from um, and just be my friend and have companionship because we don't really need to someone to fulfill other needs for us emotionally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think as, and men too, I think everyone needs to be a whole person to come together in relationships. So yeah, the entanglement yeah, piece yeah. of starts to get complicated. Um, everyone needs to feel okay being independent and by themselves and then having a connection that you share independently of each other. It's where the codependence and the entanglement get involved where 
you start to like the relationship starts to suffer because then you're depending on that person for happiness. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, you know, you look, I was looking at all the divorce rates and marriage rates and all that stuff and marriages are down globally. People are not getting married. And I'm like, okay, is it just everyone's decision? But a lot of it is females decisions. Um, mm -hmm. Vicky, I think you read it too, or you sent me an article too a long time ago. I, I sent to it by so many people how in South Korea, women are refusing to get married and yes. they are marrying themselves. <laughs> They're doing this whole like, I'm well, married. There's this whole, yeah, it, it's, it's an epidemic there basically because now their population, they're in negative population growth. Right. So Berkeley, not only are they not married, they're not having babies. They're, yeah, there's, they're at the point now where they're an aging society and they're the fastest uh, growing aging society in the world. Yeah. So the government's now starting to freak out. And instead of fixing it, the, the root issue, which is financial, which is the way that women were treated there in relationships, um, you know, prosecuting domestic abuse and all that kind of stuff. They went, now let's just sponsor a speed dating <laughs> around the country. We'll have little speed dating here and then we'll get these people together and they'll just have babies. And this just happened like last, last month, I think. Um, Wait, the government so they're just throwing money at it. Yeah. Yes. So they're and having these big events. Women have babies because they're in South Korea in all these um, studies and in the future, South Korea will be the first country to be gone. No more population. Negative population growth. Yep. Women are refusing to have children and get married because it was such a male dominated patriarchal society and, and still is, but women are having more say now. So what are men in South Korea doing? They're starting to change their attitudes. The younger generation is starting to younger change their attitudes is. towards how they treat women, how they go about. But it's not just women. that it's, it's financial. It's financial too, mm -hmm. because it's so expensive to have kids there. Even the men don't want kids. Like it's not just the female's decision. It's couples don't want kids. The ones that do get married because they can't afford it. So and, apparently uh, it's not yeah. just in South Korea because I, I found this article while I was doing my homework. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, are you ready? I, I can talk I, about I, that. <laughs> me too, me too, teacher. <laughs> so look, I printed it's it like out. Like I need, like so, I need. Um, <laughs> This, uh, this is an article that was taken from The Independent. It's a 2019 article. Um, Maya Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer? How do you think? Oppenheimer. It? Sure. Um, and it, it says, the title of the article says it all. It says, women who are unmarried and childless are the happiest people of all. And it goes on to say, um, just like some key points, um, Tying the knot and having children are typically considered markers of success in society, but women who shun this pressure despite the stigma tend to be happier and healthier as a result. And this professor of behavioral science, right? He's the London School of Economics. London School of Economics, behavioral science. Okay. Um, <laughs> He yeah. said, married people are happier than other population subgroups, but only when their spouse is in the room when they're asked. As soon as the spouse is present, <laughs> they're fucking miserable. <laughs> wait, wait, let's ask Ashley because her husband's not in the room. Because I've never been married, so shed some light, Ash. <laughs> I know. We, we, we have been married. Our spouse listening to this, we, we can no. make you. We can make you like <laughs> blink twice. Fitness protection program. <laughs> yeah. Do you need help? Yeah, but like, are you happy? <laughs> No, I mean, I, I love being married and I'm, you know, I can't say that for my first marriage. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah. But you know the criteria because, going into your second marriage then, like you knew already what you. I had gone through, that. by the time I got married to my current husband, I had gone through a long distance relationship of about five years and then I had, and then after that, I went through a, a separate relationship where I was married. And I would say between those two relationships, I came out of those learning what I didn't want in a partner. And I didn't date to find my current husband at all. Uh, he kind of fell into my lap in the most like ridiculous sense. 
Um, that's that's a story for a different, for a different day. <laughs> okay. I know. Randy and I are like taking notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so long story, but basically I um I was forced into a, a um into kind of like a working slash uh, roommate situation with one of my brother's friends. And that's how we became close. Um, and so, but I went into the relationship with my boundaries and expectations. I basically said, I don't want kids. I, uh, I'm i very career oriented. I don't want anyone that's going to hold me back. I want someone that's going to support me. I went into that with like a laundry list of like expectations that I expect them to meet if they want to make me happy. And he gave me his and we you know, went into it with a mutual understanding about what we were going to offer each other, which was, you know, little to nothing other than just companionship, because I was independent, and he was independent, we both made our own money, we both had our own things, like we didn't need each other, but we wanted each other. Right. And And that's the perfect marriage. Um, And I, I love hanging out with him. And we uh, it's not a codependent relationship that I see in a lot of people, which, which is where they can't go anywhere without, um, <sighs> without like one another. I'm going to Cancun tomorrow and I'm leaving him here. And he is fully supportive of that. Um, whenever he goes up and he plays video games at night with his friends, cause that's what he likes doing. I like sitting down on the couch with my dogs and reading. And at the end of the night, we come together and we tell each other about our day and, you know, we support each other and we go on walks and, you know, I'll cook dinner and he'll clean. We have a division of labor in the household. Um, he's always looking to meet my needs as a partner. Like, hey, what do you need? Can I get you anything? And I do the same thing whenever I have the energy. And so we're just, it's just such a, when you find the right person and. Does he have any brothers? Um, <laughs> I was say. Like, <laughs> can we clone him? <laughs> Her husband is a gem. Like, it, <laughs> he's a gem. And I'm just like, yes, that kind of partnership is, I think, what a lot of women are wanting nowadays. It's not about, mm-hmm. uh, now, it might not work for some women. There's women, and it's fine. There's women who might want in a partnership where the man, you know, financially um, takes care of them or is a stay at home dad because they want children, but they don't want to raise the children. It's like, can you raise the children? And I'll do the, you know, it, it depends on um, really what it is that you want. But it's like Ashley said, you have to speak to each other about what your boundaries are, what your lists are um, and see, does it work together? But I can say this, Rachel, because I've seen the men that you date. I do not date <laughs> conventionally attractive men. Wait, wait okay. Listen, I have dated. Um, you, you were all about looks. And then, <laughs> and then then you enter into a relationship where, like, everyone's ego is involved. Like, <laughs> and you're, you know, it's constantly, like, you know, very uh, surface level. I want someone with intellect that's bringing okay. good conversation. Not, this, is, this is because of what I already had in a long relationship that's what i was gonna say yeah i went through a different phase in yes. phase. <laughs> phase but you know i i always tended to go for the for the guys that have always been brushed off in like the friend zone their whole lives i like those men because those are the ones that have looked past looks and and very surface level things and look for intellect and look for having a conversation with a, with a woman. And but how do you find the sexual attraction? So here's my thing. Like I, what I'm most I drawn to. I like the purpose that I think your husband is actually very good looking. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's not good looking. No. <laughs> he, he, he is good looking, but he's not like, he's a troll. Yeah. Like, muscles and I mean he is fit but he's not like tan he's you know I mean you're kind of yeah comparing to the what people think like Rachel I know you go for tall men so don't even act like you don't have standards like I don't care about height and (laughs) how tan they are and how muscly they are that was like me completely (laughs) 
everyone's always like has, it's like, always the short girls like, that care about height let me just put that out there too everyone's always like you must be <laughs> this tall to ride this ride I'm like I don't care how tall you are yeah Exactly. Um, exactly. exactly. I, I, I like that I'm being compared to a ride. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's the Viking ship. <laughs> no. It's interesting what you're saying because I have in my mind, and I've seen other people, and Randy, I think you and I know one person who they dated somebody, they dated a certain type or a look. It's but they ended so up someone no. who's completely different and happily married with like two children right now. But it's somebody that they were friends with from when they were younger, reconnected and completely different from what like I was like, oh, that does not seem like the type of person that she'd be with. But um, and so in my mind, too, I was like, you know, I'll date a specific type. But when I if I ever want to get married, which, you know, marriage is just not a big deal for me. But I do want like a committed relationship. I want a committed partnership, um, lifetime partnership. I look for certain things. So you don't have to be conventionally good looking, but you have to be attractive to me. And you can become more attractive with your personality. My ex of 11 years, when I first met him, I thought, okay, not the type that I usually go for. But, you know, he's not bad. As I started dating him more and more and more, I was like, oh, my gosh, he's better, better, better looking and very attractive. And um, it, it really does come with that mental and emotional um, intelligence of someone. And, yeah, how they treat me. If you're treating me with respect and with understanding, uh, yeah. Like you said, service level relationships, they're just for. <laughs> well, but didn't um, they rank looks somewhere on that? The articles that you sent us looks were pretty high. Attractiveness. Well, now on attractiveness. Men, um, it wasn't. So there was two. Or was that in the New York, New York Post? Yeah, there New, was York York New York Post, maybe. Oh, but in the, yeah, it, it really goes to like how first is how you're treated or how, uh, there's kindness towards you mm -hmm. or understanding. Um, what was it? Confidence. 90, it said more than more than 90% of women want a partner who is taller than them. So Ash and I are in the 10%. <laughs> heterosexual, this is from the New York Post, by the way. Uh, heterosexual and homosexual women agree that attractive smile, then attractive eyes are the two most important physical features. But then they diverge from there. Interesting. I, I can say, well, eyes... And this is going to sound weird. Teeth are like my attractive features. It doesn't sound weird. And my <laughs> husband has beautiful teeth and he has really light blue eyes. And he's the most gorgeous eyes I've ever seen. I was drawn to those. So I do have like some, you know, uh, um, some traits that like I, you know, I gravitate towards, but I'm not going to like toss a man out for height or because he doesn't have muscles like first of all dad bonds are in but, but don't you feel like you're boxing yourself in if you come with all of these requirements that they have to meet and a lot of times the attraction comes later after I start to have conversations with people and I think that if people were to set aside you know their preferences and engage in a conversation and get to know someone they'll be pleasantly surprised at how attractive they start to be mm -hmm. so That's what makes dating apps so difficult yeah. because you're basically just swiping through based on the way they look and it's <laughs> i did not right. grow up they... in the dating app world so i don't know how hard it is for you guys it's well plus like they did the opposite where they've had a bunch of dating shows around the world where they meet people there's a really popular one in japan love is blind i think they might do it in the u.s mm -hmm. now too i think yeah but so they people in these pods and you don't actually see them first you just talk and oh, they pick a partner terrifying. based on their conversations yeah and then they're like no. once they pick a partner then they get to meet in real life and once they meet in real life they all end up splitting up because they're like well this person you know it, it turns out that looks or what you're attracted to did trump just on this show and i realize it's reality tv so you know it's all fake but It'd be interesting to see if you had the opposite dating app, if you actually would just talk first and not have anything visual 
if you would even bother to go on a second date after you've seen them. Or, you know, I know that Rachel and I have rolled up to some dates. It's, you know, we've been catfished, right? So you walk up and you're like, this guy is not what his pictures were. And it's like, okay, I'm leaving or, you know, we've said hi and goodbye. Women just want you to be confident. You don't have or to be truthful. Be yeah. Don't lie. Or you know, like, like the, the bar is set low. People. Um, so like <laughs> talk about height or just what your appearances are. Or if you are like me, if I'm used to dating tall men, I don't automatic. And I've talked about this in therapy with my therapist. <laughs> I said, "Am I? We've talked limiting? about it too. Yeah. Am I limiting myself to people because?" I'm attracted. And my therapist said, no, because that's what you're attracted to. It's okay. You're not, but are you not giving people chances because they're not blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, I do go on dates with people that aren't always tall. So let's break that down a bit. Let's, let's remove, let, let, let's remove the imagery altogether of, of what a man that you're attracted to is like. Let's say um, I'll I'll single you out, Ranji. So if we if we took away all of the physical traits and we said, all right, if you were to have a conversation with the man and you were to get mentally stimulated by that conversation, what would you be talking about? And then break that down and say, all right, where am I going to find someone that's going to have that type of conversation with me that I get you know, like mentally stimulated. And for me, um, that was, you know, I, I am traditionally a scientist. (laughs) So I loved having conversations about things that I felt comfortable in. So like biology and microbiology and, you know, a lot of those. And whenever I was like mentally stimulated by someone, it was someone that was like scientifically sound and I can have, I can carry a conversation. I thought that was really sexy that they knew about some of these things. So whenever I closed my eyes, like, where would I find those types of people? Well, I would gravitate towards academia. Um, Maybe if I was mentally stimulated by someone who, uh, you know, was into video games, well, where would I find those people? Well, I would go to a tabletop convention and, or like a gaming convention and I would find those types of people. So if I close my, my eyes and I remove the physical altogether and you, and you were to tell me what, what part of a conversation would be mentally stimulating and also sexy to you, what kind of conversation would you be having? Am I still on the hut? Am I still yeah. on the hut? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. I thought you were I'm not answering now. that. Oh, no. Oh, um, I'm not touching that well, with a 10 foot pole. So I think I really, what I find attractive and sexy are people that have an expansive kind of global world view of things. So if somebody would talk to me about their travels and not just, not just travels like going to nice hotels and, and, you know, lounging around at posh pools, but like actually cultural experiences with the food and the language and uh, things like that. I think that's what would really kind of turn me, turn me on. And I like a, a person that's articulate, use some cool words, right? And, and if, if bonus points, if you're texting or messaging me and, and your, your grammar's good and, so it sounds to me, Rangie, like right, you need to go in and shop for men at REI or like a, a philanthropy uh, convention or. <laughs> no, I think maybe more, well, philanthropy, not that philanthropy is not, but I kind of like sophisticated stuff too. Like I like food. I like wine as I sit here in my sweatpants, but I mean, you know, <laughs> ideally we're talking ideally, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, that's a hard well, that, you know, Rachel and I were talking about, like, when we were talking about this topic, for me, that puts you in the friend zone. Like, what do I want for my friends? And can you have male friends? And is that even possible? But, and I, you know, I, Ash is a different, coming from a different place, you know, we're different people. So for me, if, even if I find that sexier stimulant or whatever, if I'm not attracted to you physically, even if I think that's an interesting conversation, you're going to be a friend or something yeah. along those lines. So yeah, it's that's what I'm saying. It's 
A lot of people are friends to me. It's very difficult for me personally to find that kind of mental and emotional and physical um, mm -hmm. stimulation for someone. To get that like, oh, that spark, it's very difficult for me. So to me, automatically, everyone's like friend zone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But don't kiss your friends is the difference. Like if I just look at a guy as a friend, I do not want to kiss him. I feel like, Rachel, you'll kiss your guy friends, right? <laughs> I'm a friend. Like, there's some friends where I'm like, you know, they might have the physical connection or aspect, but there's someone that I have the mental connection aspect with. Um, or, again, emotional is very difficult for me. But I'm emotionally attached to all my friends. But get taking it to that, like, next level of, like, this is someone I want an actual relationship with. Again, it comes organically. Like, it's just, like, oh, we feel that mutual. There is this just instant connection kind of thing. Um, but very rare for me to feel that. So when people ask me, what do you want? I'm like, I just want people to understand me, but I don't know what I want because it's not like a list that I have. I can say, I want someone who's confident. I want someone blah, 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 blah. But I might meet someone and there's just like, there's something about this person. You have to feel it. I have to feel it. And it's just like, whoa. Okay, and that's what happened to me um, in my, most, a lot of my relationships, except for recent ones. <laughs> recent ones, I was like, I'm not gonna feel anything, so let me just go about dating people. <laughs> but it was always, I'd rather be single and happy and have my friends and do things with my friends. And when someone comes along and I was caught off guard, I was like, whoa, I was trying to friend zone my ex or I just thought, oh, we're just going to like date and have fun or whatever. But I was like, whoa, what is this feeling I'm feeling? What is this connection? It hits like so many different levels. So what do I want or what do women want? I don't know. Me as a woman, I would say I just want someone who I have that. And it's a feeling. It's a, this person understood me. This person is kind to me this person but you can try to be kind to me you can try to there has to still be some sort of who knows what it is <laughs> I like men that are warm I like warmth in a man mm -hmm. that kind of is what makes me sort of connect and kind of melt a little bit and brings my defenses down but it's tricky because I don't want warmth in a dad way <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It has to still be, but you have to have warmth, but you have to still be sexy and hot somehow. It sounds impossible, but we're impossible. Yeah, I know. It's true. I want that warm dad feeling from my male friends who are actually just my male friends, that there's no like ulterior motives, there's no hidden feelings. Like, this is true. Do you think that's real though? Don't you think somewhere in there? their little brain, there's a little hope. Like if you came on to them and you went up one day and you were like, listen, I have this hidden burning desire for you. Do you really think they wouldn't be like, feel like they won the lottery? I, I think most men would jump on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> men do say that they're not friends with women just to be friends. A lot of, I, I, I've heard that. But I also have friends where it, it goes in waves. Like they might have had initial, um, attract you or hope or but then they get to know me more and they're like oh yeah no <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> just right <rough. laughs> um, because I have many male friends that you know uh, most of them are all married happily married and we're just it's like oh it's like brother brother like my brother or like my dad um, no creepy uncles. It's just <laughs> right. <laughs> like I don't know. Do you guys have male friends? What do you guys look for in your male friends? <laughs> Silence. Nobody wants. I don't Anyone? want to creepy innuendos. Like I don't want a male friend that's constantly like dropping little like hints that they want something more. Like it, I have to feel like they are comfortable in the friendship yeah. and they're not going to be pushing for more. Honestly, I, all my I guy friends were gay. Well, see, that um, works. Yeah. Works. All my guy friends are gay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have had married male friends, and I've had them hit on me as they're walking me back to my car at night. And, like, I, I don't know. I just don't trust it, I guess, because I've had the experience of 
it not staying in the friend zone. And so I just removed that. And I've got a ton of gay friends that are just the best friends I've ever had. And it just works for us, I guess. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I guess I'm we send each other, you know, lucky with my male pictures friends. of guys, <laughs> my male friends who are not gay. Um, they, they really look at me as a little sister or mm -hmm. a sister. So mm -hmm. it, I've been yeah. lucky in that sense. They're protector. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, non, non-threatening has no even like hint of being attracted to you. Like it's really important to make that relationship work that I don't feel like you're going to betray my trust that mm -hmm. you're gonna be the brother type and the protector i my my best friend is is male and we've been best friends since college and we connect on like we play golf together and we have like banter like brother sister banter back and forth and i've never felt like he was attracted to me and i've never been attracted to him and you know he talks to me he he's can, you know, can make himself vulnerable, which not a lot of men openly do. And we, we talk about like, you know, hard conversations and stuff like that. And that's what a, what, that's what I look for. Just like I would look for that in a female best friend that right. I could confide mm -hmm. in someone and they can be vulnerable with me. And it's not just a service level relationship. It's, you know, a brother, sister, like I, I truly feel like he cares about me and is protective of me as a person. Yeah. And that's what the psychology today article was saying that women, when they're looking for friendships and males, it is the same criteria as they look for in their female friends and mm -hmm. their female friends. Yeah. It's somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being my best, one of my closest friends, best friends is from high school. And we used to joke around how we said, if we're by a certain age, don't have children and aren't married, we'll just, I guess, we'll like petri dish. The 30 pack? Yes. <laughs> yes, I've had that too. If we're single by 30, let's get married. I saw the girls that he dated all through high school and the women. He, I'm like, yeah, definitely me, not his type. <laughs> and, um, he was not my type. We we're just friends. And it was such a nice safe feeling to know that I've got my my friend here and you know I can walk if I'm scared I'll just call him like hey it's kind of dark out and I need a I need a man friend <laughs> to walk help walk me to my car there got it you know it's that's what you want I had a little brother but he's like look home I don't care <laughs> I yeah, I think that's the difference. I, th I, I think that's the difference is like my male friend would be like, well, then you better find somebody. Like he, would, he wouldn't, <laughs> like he would be like just exactly like my brother would. He would be like, well, good luck. <laughs> I'd have to bribe my brother. I'd be like, no, I'll pay you. I'll give you my allowance. Come get me. <laughs> but, yeah. So, Randy, male friends, you don't. Do you have a lot of male friends or? I do have male friends, maybe more male friends than I have female friends, interestingly enough. So, but yeah, real quick, I just want to say that a lot of male friends, they may still have that hope. So they're friends with you, but they're, if, as long as they're able to hide it well <laughs> and not make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I had a therapist tell me something that was really interesting one time. I have a long, long time male friend that um, he, we ended up having to be roommates. I just desperately needed a roommate and had to take the first person that walked in the door that didn't look like they were going to kill me in my sleep. And <laughs> because I had to make rent and it ended up being him. And he's, uh, I think he's undiagnosed Asperger's high functioning, but on the spectrum, um, he even agrees that he probably is. And he's been in my life for, since we were 24, 23, 24. And I had a therapist tell me one time, and so I've spent most of my adult life single. I have had long-term relationships, but I tend to go a long time in between them. And so I'm very comfortable on my own and doing my own thing. And my therapist said that I'm kind of using my like longtime guy friend to fill the role 
of a spouse in a non-sexual way. And that as long as I kind of had him so heavily in, in my life in that way, that there's no room for me to bring in an actual like romantic partner or husband. And that was really terrifying to hear because I could not, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I was like, so, um, but it's true. I mean, you know, when I, when I need something fixed or, and still to this yeah. day, he just lives five minutes from me. And it's like, if I need help getting a box out of the garage or somebody needs to climb in the attic and make sure it's not on fire because the smoke alarm is going off, you know, I, I call him. And so he does fill a lot of those roles that a spouse would. Wait, hold on. Let's unpack that. So, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. um, are you suggesting? Can I get a drink. <laughs> are you suggesting that <laughs> this is, vodka. Is, is designed to be depended upon? I'm sorry. What'd you say? Uh, are it, you? It sounds like your therapist is suggesting that your spouse is someone to be depended upon. I don't think that's super healthy. No, I don't think she meant that. I think what she was trying to to say was. When you spend a lot of your time, because it what like I've this particular guy, we've actually been roommates throughout our lives three times. Mm -hmm. And so with him being a roommate and, and it's so easy for me, like if I want to go out and go to dinner, I just be like, hey, do you want to go to dinner? You know, let's go grab this instead of instead of me making the effort to actually go out and find suitable oh. partners for myself. I would just kind of fall back on him and let him fill a lot of those roles that someone that you're dating would fill. I think that's what she was saying. And it was probably, and you know, it was probably true. Yeah, it's interesting because um, Ash and I were talking last night about, I mean, Ash, do you want to bring it up about a society without not needing men? <laughs> to fill um, no, it's a hot topic because uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the Barbie movie recently. No? Okay. I haven't seen well, it yet. Yeah, I was like, what's the big deal with the Barbie Everyone, so well, it's uh, it's not what you think it is. Um, it was not meant to be Wait, like a lighthearted you know, comedy. Seen the Barbie movie, and you want to watch it? Any watch uh, listeners, watchers, spoilers? I, I'm not. I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, yeah. You can find all of this stuff out just uh, on the internet. On the internet, internet yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's a female not, empowerment movie. It is. Um, well, yeah. it's it is. Well, a, that's what they're saying on the internet. It is a mm. movement. It's a social movement. It's an enlightening movement. It's not, yeah, it's comedic. It, it is a little bit of a lighthearted comedy, but that's not really the root of what the the movie is. And it's, um, uh, it's meant to show, you know, how, you know, traditionally, um, you know, women's roles have been, you know, caretakers and mothers and they grew up with baby dolls. This is in the, this is in the trailer. Um, and Barbie came along to kind of disrupt that norm of like women are only meant to be caretakers and mothers and basically teach young girls that they can grow up and be whatever they want. And um, it showed like the entire movie is spent between Barbie land and the real world. And it, you know, throughout the movie, they swap so that you can see, you know, the irony in the, in the situation where in Barbie land, Barbie is independent and she can do all of these jobs and do you know, be, be whatever she wants. And Ken is a, an accessory to her life and she's not dependent on Ken and Ken's not dependent on her. They just coexist and they're happy with each other. And then it shows kind of like the stark difference whenever she gets out in the real world where there's misogyny and she's objectified and there's the patriarchy. And it just shows how the roles are so drastically different. And she looks around and sees all these jobs occupied as men and women aren't doing any of them. And it's, it's kind of sad in some areas. Uh, it's like a whole light bulb thing that goes on throughout the movie, though. It's really good, but it kind of, it lends itself to this conversation well, because, um, you know, like, Barbie doesn't need Ken. You know, Ken is like this, this, you know, accessory to her life that makes her life better in, in you know, some ways, but she's fulfilled in other ways in like herself and, you know, the jobs that she takes on and, and, you know, just also lifting up other women, <laughs> which is way different than it is in real, in, in the real world. But um, anyway, it's a, it's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, I would highly suggest going to see it. 
I mean, my whole takeaway from everything is basically what do women want? They don't want to need you. They just want to want you is what I think. We don't want to need you. We just want you <laughs> to complement our lives. And we do the same for Spice you. Spice Girls. No. Like, I don't want to be needed. Sorry. It's like you want me because of I compliment your life. Not that you need me to do something for you. So what do you guys think? Is it about right <laughs> for you guys too? Yeah, one of the things that I think that people are going in a little bit of a wrong direction with the movie, they're kind of misinterpreting the message, especially people that are saying that it's a man-hating movie, is that the whole point is, to you know, Rachel, your, your whole spiel is, we don't need men, but also men shouldn't need us. Mm -hmm. We should be able to be our own person and we should be able to support each other regardless of gender and then come together when companionship makes sense. So with that said, that's going to end our show today, but let us know what you guys think. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and join us for the after show. We'll probably talk more about Barbie land and more about different roles. So join us and we'll see you next week. Bye guys.